Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Million Dollar Body Podcast. If you're here, it's probably because you're a high performer, business owner, or a leader that's interested in maximizing your physique, your finances, and your family time using fitness and nutrition as force multipliers in your life. If you're not a part of the Facebook group already, definitely go to n8trainingsystems.com slash group. And you can, it's where we stream the podcast live every Tuesday. Uh, you can join in, ask questions. There's a ton of cool stuff happening in the group, a lot of free resources. So again, go to n the number eight training systems.com slash group to join us there. If you're already in the group and watching us live, we're excited to have you because today we're going to be talking about eliminating love handles and lower abdominal fat, which is a different animal than just weight loss. Okay. So it's very, it can be very easy for you to go from like 30 to 40% fat and lose a lot of weight and get down to that, but 20% fat for men or 25% fat for women, but it takes a different strategy to eliminate some of those sticky areas where fat just doesn't seem to let go of very easily. Okay. Or maybe it's the area that fat comes back for you as fast as like, like, you know, tried keto, all of a sudden you have a bagel and you're like, why is my stomach bloated again? So we're going to be talking about some of the chemical, like the strategies that can help you avoid the chemical imbalances that that dictate some of this fat. So I'm going to be talking to you about why that happens, um, what we need to do to get rid of it, and why this is important. Okay, so don't get really excited. This is going to be a fun episode. One of the big before we get started, one of the big things I like to do uh, on the podcast is get a shout out to the people accomplishing big things in the million dollar body community. So I want to give a shout out right now to Jeremiah Osborne. Um, crushed it, absolutely crushed it over the last four weeks on the million dollar body method. He has lost 17 pounds. And the coolest thing is that he actually sent in an email that he said he's figured out how to make this style of eating work for his life, where he literally doesn't even pay attention to what he eats in the, in the evening. He said like he did, he kind of followed the, he followed the system in place for the first, like during the Super Bowl, like all the way through to lunch. And then he just did whatever he wanted, ate, ate drank, had a great time um, at the Super Bowl and has still continued to drop weight regularly day after day week after week so congratulations jeremiah crushing it man can't wait to see you accomplish next okay all right so let's get into it love handles and lower abdominal fat why are they different from other areas of fat so the the interesting thing here is that most females can go from about 45 percent fat to like 25 percent fat without really big any, any big issues guys can drop like from you know 40% fat down to 20% fat. Again, no real problems, just kind of restricting their calories, moving a little bit more. And you're getting like, you can get lean doing something like that. Okay. But it's once you, once as a female, if you're 25% fat, if you're, if you're a male, at like 20% fat, 22% fat, that it becomes much trickier to target some of the specific problem areas or to lower your body fat to like that 15, 10% threshold. Okay. So what got you to from point A to point B is not the same thing that's going to get you from point B to point C or you know, point Z or wherever at you're at in your fitness journey. So that's a really key to know here is that what may have worked in the past to get you some good results is not the thing that's gonna take you from where you're at right now to where you want to be. So that's one thing that we always wanna keep in mind when you're doing a new fitness program, doing a new exercise program, trying new supplements, is that um, to, in order to get what you, what you haven't had before, you probably have to do something that you've not done in the past. So that's where it comes to kind of these sticky area sticky areas of fat. And a lot of people will blame a lot of different things, genetics, bad sleep, age, metabolism slowing down. Or if you're like, if you've kind of been in the community, you might be like, oh, it's cortisol, the belly fat hormone. But this is the key thing to remember here is that the having that lower abdominal sticky fat, having those love handles, these are symptoms of what's called insulin resistance. And I talk about insulin resistance a lot because it's one of the key components of body fat storage that people are just aren't aware of. Okay. So you, you may not have heard of this before. You may have heard of it before, but it's also, but if, if you have this, even if you are a, like a thin person, but you still are carrying around this a kind of extra layer on your belly and your love handles, you probably have some insulin resistance you need to work on. One easy way to check that out is to measure your waistline right about belly button. Okay. Measure that, 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 uh, that band around your waist, divide that by your height. Um, if you want to know exactly what the, the metric should be, drop a, drop a comment, drop me an email, nate at n8trainingsystems.com. And I can get back to you with some, with some hard, like hard numbers on exactly what you should be shooting for. But with, with insulin resistance, there's a couple things you can do to fix that and target the, like the unsightly fat that you, that you want to get rid of without having to completely eliminate carbohydrates or do any sort of like crazy like dietary program or run a marathon or anything 
that we generally think of like, oh, I, like I have some belly fat. I need to go do the hardest core thing possible. No, what we want to do is we want to work with your body rather than against your body. So the first thing we need to do is, is use some simple dietary tricks to increase your insulin sensitivity. So we can do this through diet, you know, and I'm not even talking about, all right, we gotta, we gotta avoid um, Pop-Tarts and we gotta make sure that you're doing this, but like, what are the simpler things? What are some supplements you can take? What are some stuff you can add to your diet that can help you out here? So with, um, cause with a, like right now, if you're insulin sensitive and you eat a meal, like the same meal, like you and I can eat the same meal, but my, most of my meal is going to go to replenish my muscles and go towards energy because I've trained my body to use food in that way. Whereas someone with insulin resistance, the majority of their, of their meal is going to go towards stored fat because they've trained their body that they need to store most of the calories that they're taking in. So how do we train our bodies in a way that's going to help us get out of insulin resistance, get us to being insulin sensitive. So our body starts using the calories we're eating to burn fat or to build muscle rather than as stored fat. So the, one of the, the easy things that you can do right, right off the bat is um, eating proteins and fats before you have your carbohydrates. So for example, if you look at the million dollar body method, we promote proteins and fats in the morning and then proteins and vegetables in the afternoon. So yes, yes, you can do this kind of in a meal, but I found that the most effective way to do this is by structuring your day so that you're having proteins, fats, and vegetables before you have those carbohydrates, okay? This is a very effective strategy. So please don't bypass this one. This is, the, this is something that can make a massive difference in your body's natural chemical balance, in the way you feel, in your energy throughout the day, and in your ability to sustain a diet, okay? So like Jeremiah said earlier, like he's able to structure his, his, his nutrition and his diet in a way that enabled him to grub out on Super Bowl Sunday and have an awesome time with, with family and friends rather than being like, okay, well, I have to portion this out and I only get to eat one broccoli spear. It's not what we want, right? Because at the end of the day, if you don't have a, something that's that's easy to like build off of and maintain, you're not gonna stay with it, right? Show me the person who's done keto for two years. I've met one of them. I've met one person who's done keto for more than like three or four months. Okay. There's not that many people who can do that and sustain it. So we need to find out something that's sustainable because truthfully, if we just ate tofu and, you know, like edamame for, for the next two weeks, you drop weight, but you can't sustain that. in the second you had a pop tart bagel, a beer, anything that like even a taco, something that brings you joy that you're going to balloon back up because you've trained your body to store all those carbohydrates because you're only eating a certain amount. So weight loss is not important. The maintenance is so important though. Okay. So proteins and proteins and fats before you touch carbohydrates. And you can do this a couple of different ways, but I think that the ideal solution uh, is uncovered in the million dollar body method. So if you want, if you have more questions about that, check out uh, the past two podcast episodes, check out the book on Amazon or reach out, drop a note in the comments or drop me an email. It just says, Proteins and fats, easy enough. Drop that note, okay? Here's, here's some other options. So adding some vinegar in, adding some vinegar to your day, okay? So using vinegar as a salad dressing, so you can use apple cider vinegar, red wine vinegar, anything like that. It's, it's very, um, it's like a small thing that can be a, a like I give you a big return on your investment because it's not an expensive supplement and it can help, it's called attenuate the glucose and your insulin response. So it can actually help you have a better insulin response and put your put those nutrients into the right spot from, from carbohydrates. So having that on your, on your salad, apple cider vinegar, red wine vinegar, or a vinaigrette, or if you don't have a salad during the day, just having like two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar can help you with some of that insulin sensitivity. Um, it can, um, one thing that some studies have shown is that having two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar before bed can actually help decrease your morning glucose by like 5%. So it's a small thing, but again, it's not expensive. It's something that everyone can do without, without an issue. The next thing, a dietary trick you can add in fiber, taking fiber once per day, that can def, def, like lower your, lower your blood sugar by up to 10 or 11% even. So get a fiber supplement. Don't, don't buy anything crazy. If you just go to your grocery store and you buy some psyllium husks, spell with a P, P-S-Y-L-L-I-U-M, psyllium husks, and you just take a scoop of that. I just put it in a little shot glass, take it back. Then I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not old. I'm not a grandpa. I'm shooting it. So I'm still cool, right? Just think about that. And then the last thing, the last thing, which is a simple trick that you can add in is omegas, adding in omegas or some fish oil. Um, it'll definitely help 
by keeping your blood sugar low, by muting some of the effects of that insulin resistance. But also when you combine fish oil and the right type of exercise, it has a combination of bonus effect on your blood sugar reduction. So make sure you're getting uh, at least 360 uh, milligrams of EPA and 240 milligrams of DHA, hopefully less than three pills. So you can look at the back of your fish oil or Omega's bottle to make sure you're getting that. So that's that. Those are some just simple tricks that you can that can help you here. Okay, if you just did those things, like you'd start getting some better results. You'd start helping your body out, but it's really not the complete story either. So make sure that you um, are taking some of these tips, adding them into your repertoire, but also keeping in mind that the like having the combination of all these things stacked in place and doing them exactly correctly is going to yield you the best results the fastest. Okay. Number uh, number two is make uh, dieting 24 hours a day, seven days per week and going low carb all the time is actually going to delay your results or cause you to gain more weight back over time. Instead, stick to a plan that en enables you to eat, uh, we'll call it normally or just without necessarily worrying about every, every stick and every drop of this and every uh, carb of that and gram of this uh, at every single meal. Because number one, that's going to burn you out mentally. Number two, it's going to actually decrease your results over time, especially as you cut carbs and you decrease the amount of carbohydrates your body's taking in because you're training it, your body not to need carbs. So when you do have them finally, because carbs are delicious and they're so prevalent in, in our society, when you do have them, it's going to trigger your body to store them more as fat. So don't decrease your carbohydrates. Don't go full keto. Don't go all low carb Atkins because there's a better way because we need carbohydrates to manage our energy, to feel really good and to, to get the most out of our exercise sessions. So don't cut carbohydrates all, all the way out and make sure that you're setting up your diet in a way that enables you to eat normally during the day. My favorite way to do this is by doing that at dinner. So making sure that dinner, you have a great carbohydrate. So whether that's uh, potatoes or rice or pasta or tacos or tortillas or something like that, where you're like really enjoying it. Like we want to, we want to make sure that you have those things because otherwise it can become too hard to maintain your results. Um, number three is making sure that you are targeting your training to actually address this problem. So not going out and just, and being like, okay, I've heard I need to go train. So I'm just going to go run a 5k. I need to go run five miles. I need to go bike. I need to get a Peloton. I need to do X, Y, or Z. I need to hit a boot camp. but actually picking out a training protocol that's going to give you the results you're looking for in terms of increasing your insulin sensitivity, decreasing your, your blood sugar on a regular basis, helping your body partition nutrients, take the food you're eating and put it in the right spots. So you want your training to match your nutrition, to match your goal. So so many often I see people who have training is here, nutrition is here, and their goal is here. They're totally out of alignment. They're never going to see the results they're looking for because not everything's lined up. So you want your training and your nutrition to match your goal. And this is much easier than people think, but it's just so it's, it's convoluted and it's not um, ob always obvious because there's so much information out there. And while a boot camp might be the right choice for some people, it's probably not right for you if you're trying to get those last few pounds off, trying to go down from like 22, 20% body fat as a man to 15% or under. It, those are not gonna be the right calls. So again, you like starting off with a boot camp, starting off with some like getting on more cardio can be great, a great call. Get your energy, energy up, build your cardiovascular capacity. Those things are great, but they're not going to get you to that level of leanness where you're feeling great about taking your shirt off at the pool, about wearing a bathing suit, about, you know, running to the park, playing with your kids, about like showing up at a boardroom being like, I, yes, I am the man. So yes, you'll get, you'll get close, but you're not going to finish the job with those tools. So making sure your training matches your nutrition and matches your goals. So short bursts of exercise, targeting a specific qualities, targeting progression rather than sweatiness. So again, short bursts of exercise targeting progression rather than exercise. I talked about this a little bit uh, today uh, on Facebook, but basically how do you make sure that you're always seeing progress? Well, there's, there's three main ways. Number one is adding weight to the bar. That's the one we're most familiar with, right? Number two is adding, um, increasing your form and doing every rep better than you did last week. Number three, um, adding increasing time under tension or TUT. Basically, rather than going like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, getting 12 curls done in 12 seconds, 
increasing that lowering phase, forcing your muscles to break down so you can build them back up. So you're giving your body a reason to utilize the, the carbohydrates you're taking in. So you want to teach your body how to utilize the food you're, you're giving it. And that's done with a very specific type of training that is progressive, that's measured, that builds overload, builds strength. And actually what's nice about this is that while you're doing all these great things for your blood sugar and your, and your health, you're actually increasing how good you look. You're, you look better. You are like, rather than just being a smaller, skinnier version of your previous self, you actually look more built. Your muscle tone shows through. You look like a, a fitter version of yourself rather than just a smaller version of yourself. And I think there's a lot to be said for that in terms of confidence, showing up really powerfully, feeling great about yourself, um, looking in the mirror and being like, yes, you did it. You set your mind to something and you accomplished it and we can maintain this easily. So those are really clutch. The last thing here is, is um, kind of this, this dichotomy. Everyone thinks fitness equals running, equals biking, equals these cardio elements, kind of the middle spectrum. Whereas you'd be better served with those short bursts over here. It's a little bit more hardcore or these lower key, longer sessions, which I think for, for men grabbing a, like a, a weight vest, you know, something like 15, 20, 25, 30 pounds, putting that on and going for walks is one of the easiest, best ways to decrease your blood sugar, increase your insulin sensitivity, tell your body to burn more fat, especially in these problem areas, as well as building, like building a, a physique and like abilities that you're proud of. Okay. And I think that's, that's more important than than just looking a certain kind of way, but being proud of what you accomplished, being a proud of how you look, being proud of how you feel. So kind of in review, you need a different diet strategy to drop that sticky fat around your waist. The same diet that got you from point A to point B won't get you to point C. Number two, using some dietary tricks, using some supplements that I outlined um, by, by shifting your approach in the fats earlier in the day and having carbohydrates later in the day, clutch. Taking uh, some, some vinegar, having vinegar, like vinegar, vinaigrette on your salad or having two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar in the morning or in the evening, um, using some psyllium or some fiber, and then taking fish oil. You can take fish oil once a, once every meal, or you know a couple a couple tablets before bed. Make sure you get 360 grams of EPA and 240 grams of DHA. Um, dieting 24 hours a day, seven days a week, is going to actually turn off your results and increase your insulin resistance, which is what we don't want. So making sure that you're you're dieting in a specific way that enables you to. Um, like have a little more flexibility with your life. So whether that's one day per week, you're not, you're not dieting, or if it's like kind of how I recommend the million dollar body method, one meal per day, where it's not necessarily traditional dieting, low carb, you're going to have way better results over time. Plus it's going to be way easier to stick to. That's one thing I love about this is when I talk to my clients who have been doing the program for a while, I go, how's your diet going? They go, it's not a diet. I just eat like this now. It's not a big deal. And that honestly is so invigorating. Not only for me, I love hearing it, obviously, but also like, can you imagine a, a life where food was not a huge issue for you, but you're just the type of person who eats, feels great, and is able to actually eat the food that they want to eat and has set themselves up in a way that's, that accommodates it? It's transformational. It's, it totally will change your relationship with food, change your relationship with, with, with a lot of things, drinking, with sodas, with sugar, with energy, with how, like how easy it is to feel good. So on the other side of this, like, yes, it, it's kind of a little bit of work to get there and it takes a specific protocol. But on the other side of this, think about the person you become, because it's not all about, you know, having visible abs or looking really good. It's all, it's also about how much less energy does it take you on a daily basis to think about your fitness? How much less energy are you waste burning thinking about your food or, or not worrying, like not knowing like, what should I get at this place? And is there a breakfast burrito okay? Or should I eat this sort of thing? It's just dialed in. It's easy. You got more mental bandwidth to play with. The last one is adopting exercise strategies that are going to actually increase insulin sensitivity. This is so key. People don't realize this, that having these hardcore beat down workouts, boot camps and Peloton rides and all these things are going to decrease your insulin sensitivity, especially when done to your detriment. And especially, especially if you're not eating the right amount of carbs too. So think about this, you combine a low carb diet with hardcore boot camps or, or hardcore cardio. And then your goal is to burn off stubborn belly fat. All you're doing is teaching your body to hold on to more of it. All you're doing is teaching your body to hold on to more of it. So you need to make sure that your goal matches your, your training, which matches your nutrition, having those things 
across the board is one of the things I see people do wrong the most, having the wrong goal with the wrong nutrition and the wrong training. It's a, it's a fast track to burnout and a fast track to be like, well, it didn't work for me. And maybe it didn't work for you. And that's okay because there, there is a solution. It's easy to find as long as you know where to go. So if there's anything I can do to help you out, drop me a note, nate at n8trainingsystems.com. If you want some more information on how to utilize this, this sort of thing um, in your own life, make sure you're part of the group because we have some awesome trainings coming out about that. And actually a calendar, if you wanted to check on a, a daily calendar of the, of the seven the seven daily investments or seven tasks that you need to complete on a regular basis to, to hit these things, I already have it laid out for you. So if you want that, let me know, drop, a, drop, a, drop me a note either email or if you're watching live, just say calendar in the comments and I'll get that to you. And then lastly, if you're, if you're looking for some more help, you're just like, Hey, I'm, I'm done trying to, to do it all on my own. Please just explain it to me. Please just give me the steps. Just write it out for me. And I will execute. Let me know. And just say, just say help, please. And I, I, I got you. We, we got, we got the solution. The problem, the problem is over information, misinformation and, and not having, uh, goals that align with your training and nutrition and we have a solution here. So hopefully this has been really helpful for you in terms of learning wh what causes that sticky belly fat, that sticky love handles, the things that seem to go last in your life. Um, and hopefully you'll start making some great strides towards eliminating those right off the bat. Hope you guys are having a great day. And just remember the Babe Ruth quote that I always like to end with, you just can't beat the man who never gives up. You just can't beat the man who never gives up. So if, you have, if you've been at this for a while, if you've done the up and downs, the yo-yos, don't worry about it because if you don't give up, you cannot lose here. Have an amazing day. I'll talk to you very soon.